one. And beside him, Charbonnier, who celebrates his birthday today. So not only the Marseillaise might come from the Rangers supporters, but a little uh, celebration of that birthday as well. And what a, a goalkeeper he's turned out to be. By the way, Alan, the French uh, press, uh, some journalists in the French press were telling me that 90% of the press was supporting his action and walking out of the French squad because he said, this is a very loyal man. He gave his loyalty during the World Cup, helped out enormously, even though he was he never came off the bench, as it were, and then suddenly he's discarded. Well, I mean, I, mean, I think if a player had done it in this uh, country, I think they might have a, a different attitude, to, uh, attitude towards him. He is a very good goalkeeper. He looks good for 45, doesn't he? But actually, I think he's only 32 <laughs> today. But he, he has, he's obviously well thought of in, Fra in, in France. And uh, when he's come here, nobody really knew who he was, but he has proven that he is a good goalkeeper to replace Andy Goro. Well, it's nice to see the two players, Jimmy Sanderson, Colin Henry, acting as old failures, just bringing him out there for a day he's young lads will never forget tremendous reception by both sets of supporters and the Rangers supporters who because of success are asked to pay out handsomely to see a lot of football have turned up today to support a team that has done a, a great job a great commercial job you might say for themselves and perhaps as a byproduct for Scottish football with that performance a week and they're the the Adrianian support, well, they've come to Celtic Park before. They've been in finals. There's a great deal of experience uh, in that side. And Kenny Bank, of course. And there, Giovanni Van Bronckhurst. I saw him playing against Hearts when he was absolutely splendid, as he was the other night, where he is a sound technical player. Big integral part of the team. Major there, part of the team. And there's John Martin. Now, loyalty is sometimes an overused word, but this man... I think personifies it better than any other professional player. 750 games. He once played for a month for Albion Rovers, which in the Monklands area is almost an act of treachery, but he came <laughs> back very quickly on that, and he is in goal today. Well, 750 appearances is quite unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah, the Rangers officials there, Dick Advocat of the Rangers subs today. Look at that substitute bench. Alan. Terrible, isn't it? <laughs> They'll be in trouble if they bring any of them on. I'll tell you, good news as well that... Uh, Arthur Newman's looking to come back. Well, good news for Abercat, certainly. Maybe not so good for Tony Vidmar. Alan McDonald, you've seen it all before, wearing Rangers blue and as manager of Airdrie. And there are the subs there. And off we go into a game, of course, that means so much. Alan McDonald has a splendid CV to show anybody. He's reached two Scottish Cup finals and four League Cup semi finals in his time with Airdrie. But there's one significant omission he's still to record a win against his former club free kick first touch of the ball there for scott wilson bidmar one wonders just how long bidmar is going to last in this rangers team with arthur newman on the bench today Newman, of course, an internationalist, must be the favourite to take back yeah, over. Yeah, but I will say he was very, very good on Thursday night, and you know, it's only performances like that that, will, that can, you know, try to keep him. If Newman has a has a poor, you know, start when he comes back, that you know, Tony can get back in the team again. Wallace John way back to the halfway line with that Perini. We'll see the Airdrie are packing the midfield, absolutely packing it, and leaving Steve Cooper almost up front on his own, really and uh, trying to give Rangers no space in that midfield to, you know, control this game completely. Well, as Conchelsky's not getting the, the kind of service which brings out the best in him, not with his back to go, he's got to be facing it, moving very quickly beyond the full-back. That was meant for Albert, first move by Airdrie. Henry tried to go in there, taken away here by Alan Moore. Tries to go to the outside of Henry, and the referee says it's a throw. Referee, of course, Kenny Clark. Refereed every once and Rangers twice this season already. Played by Vidmar. Ferguson, quick in the uptake again. That's the kind of ball that this man likes. As Alan pointed out, there's a great deal of pace in this Rangers team. Coming from all angles. Trying to get the early ball in and overrunning it. 
I'm not sure that we've seen the very best of this man yet for Rangers. No, I, I think that's a fair assessment as well, Andy. Uh, Archie, rather. I think that. Uh, he, he, I mean, he struggled actually. I mean, he's got a, a hand cast on at the moment. He's had struggle with injuries and things. And I think even, you know, to, to get back into the, uh, your top performance and get that pace back, most definitely there's more to come from Andrew King Chelsea. Seemed like uh, a push there by Scott Wilson indeed. Referee stopping the play. As I said, the, the surface is good. There should be a good passing there. There's Deg Advocat. He's had a great deal of success. Came through the Dutch coaching school under the great Rhino Smeekel and has brought some of that uh, wisdom with him. But he's still to win something and he knows that. Henry's first foray downfield trying to uh, pick up Paul McGrillen on the left hand side there. Paul McGrillen was signed by Airdrie after the game which opened a new ground a splendid new ground by the way and if you haven't been there yet you should uh, try and go it's marvelous Johansson Van Brock has beautifully sprayed out now Vidmar just beyond Wallace I think played a little bit too much to his left hand side. Yeah, a little bit. That's what Edu will have to watch though. They were actually pressing the ball and got caught down that left hand side. It's okay to try and you know restrict the space that Rangers will get in midfield, but when they're going to go forward and they lose the ball, that's when Rangers will have them playing counter-attacking football. Well, Kanchelkis is a winger, not a defender, and that was a typical winger's tackle on Paul McGrillen again. But, but I tell you, you'll be happy with that because you're, you're looking for Paul McGrillen who's got a little bit of pace down there. He's playing sort of on the flanks. They've got Moore on one side, Paul on the other side, spearing headed by Steve Cooper. And they'll be looking for him to take players on and get fouls around there so they can deliver the ball in the box for Cooper. Kenny Black, very poor one. I think in situations like that, they've got to be performing very soundly. They've got to get the basic things right. Absolutely. That's in there by... Marvin Wilson scorer of the goal and here he comes again nice move there by Adrian the man who scored that goal against Celtic drifting towards the box set up nice for Marvin isn't it he scored in the last couple It'd be nice for him to get the winner today Brini slightly fortunate to get away with that McDonald uh, speaking to him the, the other week Irrepressible, hasn't changed at all in the day. He was a great nab nabber of goals themselves in the box. Absolutely, and tenacity, and I think it's shown in the Airdrie team, having said that, maybe not so much in the league, but certainly in the, in the cup competition. He wasn't speaking to me today <laughs> when we arrived because I said that we're going to beat 5 nothing. but he does, he's done really exactly what I said. He definitely hasn't played the three up front, and uh, it could be quite tight today. You mean managers treat you like that as well? Uh, no, outrageous, isn't it? Are you handsome? John Martin there had a serious injury a couple of years ago, recovered from that. He was a schoolboy, he was in Hart's books, and there's a, a very strong connection between this early side and Hart. That was a bad one. Look at the pace of Johansson. He might put this away. I think he's going to do it. Yes. Rangers have opened the scoring. And that was a dreadful goal for a defence to lose. I mean, that is like committing suicide as Johansson put Rangers one up. Well, it was a terrible kick out from Martin. It's a shame, isn't it? 750 appearances and go do something like that. But I tell you, Johansson didn't switch off. He could have had his back to goal. It's possible a goalkeeper can do that. It's a great pace, nicked in between. And he can put them in every day. Gets in between here, he shows really good pace. Thanks very much, bang. And it's 1 nothing. And that's exactly the start that Alan McDonald didn't want. Well, I think you balanced that nicely because it was a dreadful defensive yeah. error. But on the other hand, the young lad did very well. And he certainly is uh, beginning to nick the goals now. There's no question at all about that. I think that's the last, is it scored four in the last, yes, one in the last four? Well, that's his seventh goal of the season. That's not bad for a, a man who's been drafted into a position where he, he wasn't established in the first place. Well, that's a, exactly the arch, isn't it? I mean, he's by no means first team choice initially, anyway. And he's almost made that part his own. And if he keeps scoring goals, there's no way he'd have a And it's a lovely ball again, and Johansson almost in on top of that. Beautiful move again by Ferguson. And so, very typical of the way he's played this season. Good link up from the middle. Yeah, great link. It was a good run in between. He's actually 
if anything, just a little bit caught a breath. It's early in the game. He'll still be waiting for his second win after that great run for the goal. Good ball in by uh, Ferguson. I'll tell you, if that had been 20 minutes later, Johansson would have caught that. Well, can Edry come back from that? I think it was stressed before the game that that was a, any goal of any kind. It's going to be difficult uh, for Edry to come back if they conceded something in the first 15 minutes. Now they want to fight. Nicely picked up there. Osama awesome Khan came through, and there is Henry. Bobby Wilson not in possession too often, and look at the gap appearing here. Johansson again. He has Wallace in the box. And a sting taken out of that by Jimmy Sanderson. Big German having a go at it again. And you wondered about this big man. I think he has his strengths like the shot when he controls it, as he did not there. But for a man of his size uh, and height, he loses the ball a lot in the tackle and not all that good in the air. <laughs> so you'll be, you'll be happy with that, Archie. <laughs> No, I think I think sometimes he's, he can be a bit lazy, and I think he almost does enough. It's a kind of that kind of attitude he has. Uh, I think he maybe has a little bit more than that, but I think it's more important. I think when Dick Advocat was waiting for, for, for Van Brockhurst to be ready the other night, he's happy with him wide because I don't think he thinks that Adbert, Alberts has the pace to play in that position and prepares him inside. Just a little bit quick about uh, Airdrie losing the first goal. If they were going to lose the first goal, I don't honestly believe they would, if, if they were going to lose a goal in the game at all in normal play, that's probably the way they thought they wouldn't lose a goal by a mistake from Martin Lingham. Ferguson. Well, his turn in midfield, which I, I think is now becoming one of his trademarks, the way he's able to turn very quickly in a tight spot, as he did against uh, the Germans the other night to produce that first goal. Uh, that paid off there almost until his final ball. Free kick, quickly taken there. Uh, played out here, Austin McCann, given away. That's very slack indeed. Just uh, tucked away there by Anthony Smith. Again, another ex heart signing originally. Now uh, Ferguson. Just taking his time, making sure he got the ball in the free. Once again, McCann coming down the right-hand side. Bitmar caught out of position. Picked up here by Alan Moore. Just a little bit too hard. And once again, McGrillen is in there, and back comes Van Bronckers. Touched back by Wilson. Uh, Jimmy Sanderson deciding to come forward. There he is, just on the edge of the box. Sandy Stewart. A man with a lot of appearances for Airdrie, 300, over 300 in all. All just taken away from him. They've, they've really got a break out of Rangers, but they scored another goal now, Alan. I think it's going to be even more difficult than it now is. I think difficult is an underestimation. I think it would be almost an impossibility. But I mean, you know, one nothing down. Okay, they know it's going to be difficult. There's no reason for them that they can't get back in here. Rod holding the ball up loyal there. Certainly tenacity in the tackle. So, free kick. Tony Bidmar, Australian, Dick Advocat talking about him on Friday at his press conference, praised him very highly for the way he's improved this game. There he is, Sanderson. Well, Alan Moore's pace, but again, crowded out by the two Rangers players. And he's Stewart putting it down. That's a bit of piece of play by Edry McGrillen. A switch wings. Forced to cut back though. And so far there's been hardly any pressure on Rangers central defense. Except when almost self-inflicted like that. The problem is when they're playing with one striker up front, even when the grill and Ormur goes down the flanks, when they're looking to play the ball into the middle, there's sometimes too many blue shots around about, Steve, and they don't really want to get the ball into the middle for the sake of giving it away. Well, that was almost 50-50 there, I think benefit of the doubt to the defender as it normally is under these circumstances but that's a free kick the man at the back there was Anthony Smith I said about this uh, every player he's, he's a local boy very much uh, an every supporter father an ex-professional Sanderson just 
just a little bit too slack there. And you wonder if the, the range of support, both here and at home, and are sitting back waiting for the proverbial avalanche. But, uh, you know, there are difficult games to come up. They've got to get this one out of the way. And uh, I think even if it were to end 1-0, they'd be reasonably satisfied. Well, I think so. It's, I think the, the main aim here, and I think it's been proven by Advocat's team. This is the team that had a superb result midweek, and he's wanting he's want the same result to put them into the final of the league cup. I think Bobby Robinson hit the head on the nail as well when we were talking before. The only people that put this competition down are the people that are not in it, and I'm sure that they would swap places right now with the Airdrie All Rangers to win the semi final. Sandy Stewart to take it. Deep little touch across here, and almost coming in there, Austin McCann. That's where they can get you know, a little bit of success because Steve Cooper wins a lot of balls in the air. It was a good run by Austin McCann in behind them and they've got to take a chance there because Big Steve will, uh, in the middle, he'll win his fair share of headers there. And they could get a bit of success at that, Adrian. Ferguson. Plays for handling there. Scott Wilson giving it away, though. Play to the outside and there's a shot by Moore. And that was... That little piece of hesitation right in the middle of the Rangers defence where he, he played the ball, over-elaborate with the ball. Well, it was, that's just complete complacency there by Scott Wilson. You didn't see him do that at all. He wants to play, maybe never attempted to show, maybe no movement for him, and Alan Moore not that far away, really. Different sort of game, though. You well, know, that's to do a different role. I think it's just being a little bit too casual now. They're one up and playing against a team from the lower division, and maybe that has affected him temporarily I won Wallace did well with that but nobody behind him way by Jack Alperini in a position that Ferguson took up there is very tight but close down to him that was Paul McGrillen coming back Our Ferguson looking way wide and I think it crossed his mind to sweep that away out to Vidmar Look how deep Kanchelska says. Well, he wants to pass over the load to Perini and go down where he ought to be found, and he is now. Worked out beautifully, Jimmy Johansson. Can he cut it back? He can, and away from Van Broncos. Well, that was so obvious. You would have thought the entry defense on the left would have read it the way that Kanchelska's rolled and then bust into a sprint. Very good play as that was pushed out by Steve Cooper. He did that well. Almour, let's say, being caught too often in possession. And I think the referee judging there was an elbow there. And offside, in any case. Assistant referee away in the far side. Well, we're talking about the astute move in bringing him to Ibrooks. I think he must feel his uh, fall it into the river and come out with a, a, a prize <laughs> salmon the way things have ended up for him. Just beyond Sandy Stewart. Bidmar taking a little time over that. There's too much space by Edry's midfield allowed there to Ferguson and now to Kinchelskis. comes Albert and knocking the ball about as we expected and anticipated in exactly the same way as they would play against any opposition Scott Wilson tries to tuck it there to Wallace and now the shot by Van Bronckers well it uh, almost looked like a kind of slow motion move that time but well, you see the way he picked yeah. it up Manufactured that well, the Rangers, good ball in. Rod Wallace held the ball up well from Brockhurst. I think Rod maybe even tried to play it even more in front of him, but good save by Big Martin and goals. You can see a good ball by Rod Wallace, and Brockhurst maybe didn't get everything behind it. Big John had made a good save. By Brockhurst, who does all the corner kicks from either side, and that was hit it. Not just with a great deal of slicing it with power. Magnificent corner. Driven, curled, pace. Almost impossible to defend. Back he goes again. Big 
aggressive with either foot too. He can swing it in with his right foot as well. I said he was a technically very sound player in Martin. Another little touch, another corner kick. And I must say, Van Brockers must cover more space than anybody else in running from side to side. Yeah, but when he's thrown in corners like that, and he can do it with both feet then, you wouldn't ask him to, anybody else to take them. It's a good ball in deep. Martin has to come. You see how far out his goal is just to push it away. Does well, the big man, because Scott Wilson's out at the back post. Takes this left footed, and it's beyond Colin Henry, taken away by McGrillen. Great deal of experience with ball kick and Motherwell before he came to Broom. I was about to say Broomfield, but <laughs> not anymore. I'll bet. Looking for Van Bronckers, that is just beyond it. Also McCann giving very good support at the back. And that was a touch more positive about Scott Wilson. I think he's learned from that little mishap he almost had earlier on. He said, I'm not taking any prisoners this time. And uh, maybe that's too literal an expression. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's certainly gone in heavy here on Alan Moore, hasn't he? Alan, yeah, his knee has just buckled under him a little bit there. Hope he's okay. I mean, he's, he's going down in a little bit of pain though, that's not good news for him. Fair tackle though. Oh yeah, most definitely, he's, got, he's gone in heavy, he's won the ball, he's gone straight through. He's quite entailed to do that, he was probably getting a little bit out of his system from the complacency he showed earlier on. You can just see his near, right, knee right there. And Both of them actually are, are I think he'll be like all, I think he'll be alright, I hope he's going to be alright. Well, I think some of the most serious injuries you've had them yourself, yeah. Alan, in the past when you were with uh, Bayern. I don't like to talk about happen, knee happen, happen to the knees. Yeah, it did. Although the, the way he is there, actually, you can see, I think yeah. it'd be fair to say he's obviously twisted that. And that he's holding the inside, so it's his medial ligament. And if his medial's gone, then you can forget about Alan Moore taking any other part of this game. Yeah, I was talking to one of the, the sports specialists uh, during the World Cup, and he was saying the knee injuries are increasing on the continent more and more now. One, because of the number of games they played. And secondly, because of the pitches out there, which are, are harder and firmer, and much, much more likely to make knees susceptible to twist. Well, I think as well, which is which is fair to say, I think the game has become, in, in special areas of the park, you know, a little bit quicker and things. I mean, you've got players going quicker and stopping sharper and turning in directions, and your joints are going to take a fair brunt of the weight, and uh, that does not look good. And uh, you know, you, you don't want this. You certainly don't want this. This is. An awful blow there to Airdrie, given that they've lost an early goal in about seven minutes. And now we're going to have uh, a substitution that looks to me like uh, Forbes Johnson is about to come on. Well, Forbes plays in that right-hand side. I saw him play with Falkirk as well in the right-hand side midfield. It will almost be like for like, although the problem is I don't think he's got the pace of Alan Moore down that right-hand side. And he'll just sit in where he was and... Well, no, it's a great lad as well. I'm, I'm sorry to see that because yeah, he yeah. does bring so much to Airdrie. And the way they were playing today with McGill and Pace on the left, Moore on the right, Steve Cooper up front, that's a little bit of a blow to uh, Alan McDonald's plans. Well, Bob Johnson coming on now is this is a tragic side for Airdrie as it is in uh, any game when a player goes off with what is obviously, I hope not, but what looks like a serious injury, a serious knee injury. Well, Alan McDonald, I think, will have confidence enough in his players, maybe reacting very positively in adverse uh, uh, situations like this. Bob Johnson uh, just preparing to come on. That's down there by Ferguson. There's Jimmy Sanderson sweeping at the rank as usual. They'll be playing almost uniquely this system in the game. And that just picked up by Ferguson, Kanchelskis. Can't get there in time, Ferguson does now. Kanchelskis beyond the defence, Johansson just inside him. Nicked away though very well by Anthony Smith, playing very well in defence for Airdrie. Now can they come back? Certainly fight hard, the manager personifies that. Well, the Edry substitute is waiting to come on, but I think Ian Ferguson is also preparing to come on for Rangers. And it's going to be interesting. I think it may be Van Brockhurst. 
Uh, I'll bet it is. I'll bet. Off comes Albert, Ian Ferguson comes so on, and Albert simply goes straight up the tunnel. I watched Ian Ferguson at Ibrooks after the, the Hearts game when he went out into the turns. He didn't play in that game, and uh, he ran up and down the turnsing steps. He wanted to keep uh, as much sharpness as he can, even though he's not getting the games. Yeah, we can only presume there, Archie, that Albert is obviously the muscle hamstring or something that he can't go on but it's like for like Ian Ferguson just playing exactly the same position Albert's plays in. Look at the space for Perini. Wallace going in, there's Konchelskis. He's trying to go on his own there. And a foul by Ian Ferguson, first touch. I was about to say the first touch of the ball but uh, <laughs> first touch of the opponent. Going a bit on about 60 seconds. And I think folks, Johnson who, if he doesn't make it in football, will always have a, a law career <laughs> in so front of him being a graduate. And on he comes. Man freed by Falkirk, very versatile player. And I suppose, again, epitomizes the way that Alec McDonald has to go for the, the, the bargain basement player. Well, unfortunately, he doesn't have the millions like that Rangers had. And to be fair, I think he's done very well, Alan McDonald, uh, with the players he's managed to get. And you know, Paul Johnson's okay, he's not a first team regular by any means, but it's a great chance for him today to, to show his worthy of a place then. That's Scott Wilson. Well, Colin Henry's first touch there. Rather let him down, and I'll tell you what, there's absolutely no feeling of uh, inferiority about the Edry players when they dig in the way that Paul McGrillan did here. He might be captain of Scotland and Rangers, but I'm not hanging about yeah, but that's for you sort yeah, of thing. That's exactly what Paul McGrillan's got to do. You've got to upset them, you've got to put them out of rhythm, shut them down as much as they can, and most of all, let them know you're there. It was a good challenge by Paul McGrillan there. I'd like to see that from the strikers. Now, uh, Johansson, here, turn of pace again by the young lad. He has a kind of uh, gawky appearance about him, Johansson, but he seems to have been able to discipline himself a little bit. Uh, I know some Rangers supporters have wrote him off totally, but they're not doing that now. I'm sure he'll be given the biggest part of the back of all time, and if he keeps scoring goals, I'm sure he can no problem win over the Rangers fans, and that's what he's doing right now. Good for his own confidence as well, the fact that he's been given a sustained run in the team, and he's replying Dick Habakat right now. With another goal today, one nothing up, they've played almost 25 minutes. Jelskis. Well, a slow, measured build up by Rangers here on the right. Absolutely no disrespect to Airdrie in the way they're trying to pull themselves back into the game. We get the feeling that Rangers are now playing well within themselves. They have other gears to operate on. See what happens now, even though it looks as though Rangers are very comfortable on the ball, Airdrie are working so hard, Archie, that there is no pass on for them almost, as was, you know, you saw there with Wallace just heading the ball along to nobody. Kanchelskis. That blistering turn of pace, there's Johansson in the box. Found it difficult to gather it, and up came Ian Ferguson, just about a yard off the pace there. Oh my God. And Broncos, now Bedmar. Ferguson, beautiful little touch inside, and that's superb play. And that's the difference between this man this season and now and last season. Most definitely did really well there. He could have played the ball in and just watched the beautiful hack healed by Ferguson, but he followed on. You see the ball in here, good play by Ferguson. Bang, good confident play by Vidmar there. I think John did well to get his body behind it. Jack delaying that just a little bit, and I think Perini had his eye on that. He knew exactly how that would be angled away to the left-hand side. Kinchelskis. One thing about, uh, we've seen about Kinchelskis through the years, he doesn't really relish the, the hard tackle. He likes to keep clear of uh, stern defenders. Well, he beat Vidmar to the jump there that time. Not a bad effort there by Forbes Johnson the sense that he got in for it.
Ferguson, another little push. Well, the old say about Fergie, he does like to establish his imprint in the game. He's that kind of player. Put it up out a bit. And certainly you're guaranteed that from Ian Ferguson. 100% effort that boy will give you. Rushing right into that Marvin Wilson. Again, Marvin Wilson very much the local boy in the side. True Adrianian through and through. Tell me he doesn't want to play for any other club, but I think if Bayern came along and offered him, he might change his mind just a bit. Nice little chip in there by Van Bronckhurst. Al Ferguson. Chelska's a little bit puzzled how to end that move. Oh, slackness there. I think Van Broncos might have imagined that uh, Perini was going to take off just that little bit sooner. I think this seemed that was a great opportunity for Ken Chelsea there to go one and one with Austin McCann. Chose to come inside. And I would rather have seen Ken Chelsea having a go at him down the line and show us a bit of pace. Perini coming right across the player, but. Uh, the referee, I mean, none of it. A mild protest, I think, by the other players. Well, you can hear the energy supporters uh, just underneath us. They are in no way dispirited. You can hear they're making more noise. I think probably the, the Rangers support sitting back waiting for more. Well, it certainly hasn't materialized. Still 1-0. Kachelskis. And you've got to pay credit to Adrian. They've hung in there tenaciously. They haven't bothered the Rangers goal all that much. But they're still there. Only one goal margin. Perini. pressure on that Rangers defense at the back Scott Wilson Johansson drove it down very well and that's meant for Kinchelskis and I think he parted with it just uh, a trifle too early Ray Black inside picked up by Wilson Colin Henry imagined that was his ball, the big man who said that he'll be rather different at Ibrox in as much as he won't be under the same kind of pressure he was with Blackburn. No, but he has to alter his and adjust his game a bit. Yeah, he does, but he was right, that was a Rangers throw in there. <laughs> Certainly, Austin McCann and Wilson have been working very hard in midfield without much success by Broncos. Parts with it beautifully now, Kanchelskis, he wants to go himself, and out comes John Martin, the man who turns 40 next Tuesday, narrowing angle brilliantly. Yeah, well, Van Brockhurst did really well there, you're expecting this to hit the back of the net, big John Martin, a great save, superb ball through by Giovanni Van Brockhurst, Kanchelskis using his pace, pulls the trigger, but a great save by John Martin. Again, the Dutchman with the corner, there's a lot of swing in it. And you might have thought that one or two of the Rangers players in the box, gauging what uh, Van Bronckhurst is now doing, would have been further and deeper for the corner kicks. Could be a coach. It could be a coach. That's every corner kick he's taken from that side has gone deep curling in, and they're coming in too late. Not only that, they're probably standing in the wrong place, but that's three corners now, and they've all gone to the same place, and the guys haven't read that. Kutcherskis off the back of the head this time. Free kick. Kick offside, uh, quickly taken and, and too quickly. I'll tell you who's very subdued, uh, Kenny Black. I've not seen uh, too much of Kenny, you know. I, I was 
looking forward to uh, Ian, Ian Ferguson now going for a 50-50 ball. <laughs> that might happen yet, don't worry. Plenty of time to go. But I think really he's been, well, he's, he's been given the job, obviously, looking to see where Barry Ferguson is going to go in that area and has been chasing shadows a little bit. And he hasn't seen too much possession, Kenny, but working very hard in the midfield to try and stop Rangers doing what they want. There's Johansson, he's onside! He's got eyes in the back of his head. He may not be a prolific and established goal scorer. Johansson, there's a gift by Henry. And he couldn't expect it. McGrillen was very close on him. Collins gave it there. I need a shout. I can't hear anything. I didn't realise McGrillen was coming in. But Paul, good anticipation there. Uh, he is beginning to cut up this early defence on the left-hand side. And again, it's too strong. And away by John Martin. Ferguson. Well, the Russian international had to come back for that. He was quite clearly going to be in an offside position. Well, you don't see him breaking into smiles all that often. I've watched him uh, through the years when he was with the Dutch national squad and, and uh, indeed with uh, PSV. The only time I saw him really getting ecstatic was, in, you might recall it, in the World Cup when... Uh, Holland pulled back two goals in Brazil and Otto won the game. I think he was quite happy on Thursday night, Archie. Well, you were lucky you were there. <laughs> and Bronkers parted with it just a little bit too soon. Good score by Van Brockhurst. That's the Tony Bisbar. Didn't read what Van Brockhurst was going to do there. That'll come in time. A good skill by Van Brockhurst there. Henry, again, several times he's been caught looking just a little bit casual. Scott Wilson. Not entirely sure how to come away with the ball, Scott Wilson, but here's Kinchelskis. On the outside, Johansson. Uh, this truly is his position, going wide. That's not a bad ball, and Ian Ferguson comes up, and I'm sure is absolutely delighted to get in there to finish that off, and you could see it coming all the way. So Johansson has started that by coming deep, taking the ball, Kamchelskis put it on, he finds himself out in the wing, great ball in, Fergie into the box, no defigure, Marvin Wilson never really went for the challenge, he just let Fergie run in, with Alberts going off, Fergie gets his chance and notches a great ball in, curling away from the goalkeeper, all Fergie has to do is get contact on it, and the goalkeeper can't stop that count. Yes, and he comes, look at the, almost get a ruthless determination about the way he put that down from Martin, who was left, totally exposed eventually, a good goal, it was always going to come from the moment it left the foot. got to say about Ian Ferguson there's always been this division of opinion about him whether he should play much further forward remember his, his great cup final goal for uh, St Mirren in the cup final uh, he does have that ability to finish I think he now prefers actually midfield Archie I've spoke to him my goodness lots of times and I think he likes it in that midfield he's you know he's always involved in there he's a good pass over the ball Fergie and I think obviously his, his greatest attribute is you know he really battles and challenges and that's what you need by midfield players there's Kenny Black A little push forward here now Van Bronckhurst. Way down to Wallace who's offside. And I think indeed the two Rangers players were offside. Johansson away to the right hand side. He's uh, rather disbelieving there, I think. Well, initially I thought I'm quite disbelieving as well. Maybe but okay, the linesman that's where's a better view than we have. But the, the replay just didn't give us 100% there, but it was a great ball by Brockhurst and Danny Wallace and John Hansen, they always look to get in behind and it'll always cause you problems. Well, he's looking for his 10th goal of the season, so I think there's a fair motivation there to get into double figures. Sorry, I said Danny Wallace there, everybody, actually, it's Rodney. I think it'd be fair to say he's been the find of the season for Rangers, isn't it? Uh, nudged 
forward there by Smith. Kenny Black. Mm -hmm. Well, a little bit annoyed about that. I wonder, I wonder, is that a reputation? Uh, a bit of a jam in there. Double block, maybe? Well, it was a two feet. I think, he, okay, Kenny has a little bit of a reputation. Maybe the same as Fergie, but most definitely when you give him two feet there, you're, you're never going to get the, the decision from the referee. Kenny, maybe a little bit frustrated, but certainly a two foot tackle. Held that beautifully, Johansson. Allowing Perini to come up on him. The Rangers' ability to get out of tight corners like that is the noticeable, the, one of the noticeable differences between the sign we now see and, and last season. Henry wanted somebody to come towards him and Charbonnier will be delighted to get a touch of the ball at least yes free kick and McGrillen has been told don't let this man pose with the ball get in hard most definitely you know if you're going to have a defender you think might take a little bit of time here's Ferguson seemed to take it from the back there and he's gone down and he's certainly suffering. And Bedmar puts the ball out properly. And Ian Ferguson's challenge. And I think he got something as he went uh, past the player. And it does take a lot to stop him. Although, uh, Alan, he has suffered a lot of injuries in his career. Yeah, he has. Most definitely has. I think Ian's holding the back of his calf muscle there, presumably a little nick in the back of the calf, just if he's going to play the ball there sore place to get caught there, he'll be alright but stings for a couple of minutes you maybe go see him he just gets caught in the back Rangers managed to get the ball out to get him a little bit of treatment, but he has had a few injuries Ian but you know, he's just on the outskirts at the moment, not a regular but always a good man to have in your staff. He isn't, but if you're going to have a squad that's going to take on all these games, you know, the budgeting fixture list of any prominent team in Europe, you've got to have a player like that. Absolutely. Not only that, just chipped in with a goal. Ferguson, and perhaps, not surprisingly, Barry Ferguson has been... A little bit subdued, look at Ken Chelsea, she's going to let fly again, and that's a great save. What he really did get behind that, and I think the very fact that this man bearing down on you like an express train would have been off-putting, but he screwed up to it. Well, that's what you expect from Ken Chelsea, he's come deep, turned away, it's a great ball. Just before that, he came deep to take Austin McCann away from there, great pace and great shot, and another fantastic save by the goalkeeper. Eight shall not one of them. <laughs> Down there, just tucked away eventually. Kenny Clark being nice to Andrew there, there wasn't much in that. But great save, just go back to that chance. Great pace by Vikinchelskis, and a superb save again. He's done that two or three times now, John Martin. 750 yeah, games. Charbonnier, there was a misjudgment between uh, the captain and his goalkeeper. Really, that was a very delicate ball played into that no man's land there. You can see that, Alan. They, Charbonnier thought initially that Henry was going to pick this up. Yeah, I think so. And then I think Henry's actually <coughs> looking for Charbonnier to come out quicker. Big Steve Cooper doing what he's doing all game so far, keeping them under pressure. He's a striker, he's quite intelligent to go for that. Wilson, Wallace, well, I think they'll be quite content to go in if it stays the way it is, two goals up at this stage, so again I think the brakes are slightly on here, although obviously Colin Henry saw the possibility of that run forward, well Dick Advocate, I know a very good friend of his, uh, back in uh, Holland, who was the coach of Ajax has Cry, who has the highest opinion of uh, Advocat, and I have to say, said to 
advocate, you know, watching about coming to Scottish football, you know, the old business about is it the right kind of league for you? But now he's settled in and I think by the attitude of the, the Rangers players and his from the moment he stepped into the stadium, clearly he's after this trophy. That's a very good ball by Henry. I think the goalkeeper might have judged it, yes. He didn't need to come out all that uh, quickly there. He just waited for it on the edge of the box. Cut down there again by Steve Cooper. Again, rather disappeared out of the game. There's Perini. Charbonnier saw that coming. There's Charbonnier who had all that much to do in the game and I think it's always a test of a goalkeeper Alan when you know you're a spectator on a rather chilly day and you're called upon to make uh, dramatic saves eventually and he might yet have that I wonder what Dick Advocate will say Alan about well the, huh, he's answered it already uh, about that rather dilatory way that Ranger occasionally laps into in defence obviously very slight there they, they want to play around with the ball and they would know that Erge is going to go and put them down under pressure and he'll be looking for him to play the ball a little earlier than that as you say Archie he didn't look particularly happy there did he yeah, there's Bidmar doing a bit of pushing and as you can see there we're approaching half time will be taken by Sandy Stewart again an ex uh, heart signing originally Kamara played all over started off live as a striker can they get the shot in uh, real chic shrieks of an expectation there from the Airdrie supporters below me here getting a glimpse of the Rangers goal Back across and nobody in there for Adrian. And Broncos come across uh, to defend, and this is the great quality of that uh, Dutchman. He has good defensive instincts as well. That's why he knows it's a, a very big reason he's playing in that part of the team. Got a bit, bit of pace, can create goals, but also is a good defender. We've got uh, three minutes stoppage time, by the way, on top of this. Bit of pressure by Adrian now. Forbes Johnson trying to get it going. Stewart. There's Johnson. Did that well enough. Uh, too many of the moves breaking down just about here. Is this an improvement? McGrillan, that's a very good ball inside. No penalty kick, Ferguson coming across the tracks of the player. And a bit more fiery performance about Adria at this stage as we near half time and they desperately need a goal before they go in. Tucked back there by Ferguson and back to Charbonnier. And the Christmas come early if they got this one, you can see it's actually Ferguson that's gone in front of him and he's just fallen over. Certainly no way that's a penalty. But uh, he'll be encouraged, Alan McDonald, by the finish they've made to this. It's the first time they've really had Rangers penned in and they can't get out. And uh, it's certainly a little bit more encouragement, but they could have done with a goal there going into half time. Wilson caught out there just uh, a little bit too straightforward with the ball. It needed to be angled. There's only got to be one winner here. I think the Rangers, it is Rangers ball in fact, a free kick of a late tackle. I think Colin Henry knew that Paul McGillan would come in with the shoulder, remember he's already done it once in the first half, I think Colin was waiting for him to come in and do exactly the same thing there. And I think the referee knew it as well and that's why they gave Rangers a free kick in that instance. Wallace. 
Ellis and Johansson together just being left upfield with uh, there's Scott Wilson taking no chances uh, I was saying about uh, Johansson and Wallace being left upfield by Rangers with occasionally Kanchelskis coming forward other than that they seem to be settling back in midfield containing it just before half time might have been a touch on that it was indeed Corner uh, kick Carbonnier had it covered all the same Going across there to take it Kenny Black a couple of goals he scored this season we'll tuck it in with that left foot of his bad one though well, I think in the old Celtic Park that would have been away down London Road but not in the new stadium I think it is anyway and there goes the halftime whistle and Rangers want us to say comfortably in the lead by two goals to nil I think after that uh, opening goal that opportunistic goal there by Johansson they settled into play well within themselves and then came that second goal of course by Ian Ferguson coming on as a substitute and delighted I'm quite sure to get back in and try to make a case for staying there and Rangers go in at halftime as I said comfortably leading by two goals to nil Thanks Archie, yes Rangers two ahead of Airdrie at half time, we'll be looking back at the best of that first 45 minutes with Graham Spears and Bobby Williamson right after this shot oh, Sklaff and we just didn't get kicked up a bit you have to say it's an excellent finish by Johansson, in the end he was really congested by defenders, but it's a terrible clear -out. I actually didn't think Jimmy Sampson was actually wanting John Martin to roll the ball to him for J Jimmy Sampson just to take it out and Martin refused and in a way there was no need for the whole thing to happen yeah, and, and the indecision really has cost him the goal Bobby yeah it's, it's a shock start for the Adri. as I said it's disappointing for Big John but the defender's got to be aware he's got to be goal side just in case these kind of things happen and he wasn't and Jonathan Johansson's ran away from them and as I said finished off tremendously well Big John's kept him in the game really he's had a few good saves and unfortunately they've conceded a second and Rangers haven't conceded many goals this season at all and it's going to be a tall order for the to get back in it shortly after that Graham a bit of slackness in the Rangers defence which allowed Alan Moore in to get a shot and it, it was a rare effort for Airdrie in front of goal yeah, it really was, was it was really just a half half chance but at least he got his shot in but uh, it was one of the few kind of sights at goal uh, uh, Airdrie got it was a, it was a good run by Alan Moore but it, it, he was always leaning away from the ball when he was trying to shoot so it'd go for the bar and, and Bobby as you said John Martin did redeem himself later on particularly this save from Van Bronckhurst which was quite outstanding that's right I don't think Van Bron Bronckhurst has got the connection on it he would have liked but he's hit the target and he's made Big John save it and it's bounced right in front of him and he's turned it away for a corner it could have destroyed his confidence game, but it doesn't seem to have done. Well, that's what I thought. It happened so early in the game, and you thought, gosh, you know, the guy would be filled with nerves, but it was a good save, and he's actually, he's actually done okay. He's made a couple of saves, and he's, you know, he's recovered from the initial error. Kenny Black's been marking... Um, this afternoon, Martin Barry, because he's had an exceptional start for the season. And as you say, he could be able to be honest, great good touch there. Lovely look, like that. Fred Mark at the target once again. And uh, Kanchelskis, he's, he's seen a lot of the ball, Graham, and uh, when we see this shot coming up here, another good save by uh, John Martin in the early goal. Yes, I mean, Kanchelskis, um, after the first time on the stage, began to tear down the, the right, find lots of space. He does have that burst of pace. I mean, I, you know, I must admit, I, I still think Rangers paid an inflated fee for Kanchelskis. Mm. I don't think he's a five and a half million pound winger, but in this game, at this level of play, he really has found lots of space and he has got a great burst of pace. And, and they lost Alberts, Ian Ferguson came on and uh, a dream start from Bobby, he scored the second goal. Yeah, it's great for Fergie, he's had his problems in the past with injuries, but he, he finished off well, he's got himself in there. And look, he's just passed the penalty spot and he's dead in the corner now, it's a great finish for Fergie. One of the first things Ferguson did when he when he came on the pitch was inflict a foul, which is very unlike him. You, you rarely yeah. see Ian Ferguson do that when he first arrives. He gets his tackles on. Made his way. mark in the game. He's made his mark in the game. And it's 2-0 at half-time, so let's take a quick break before we rejoin goals. Five corners to Airdrie's one, if I remember rightly, that corner for Airdrie came in first-half injury time. Rangers, six shots on target, including those two goals. One shot off target, Airdrie have managed two shots, both off target. And Bobby, really, that is the game. I mean, the thing that Rangers are very good at is, even, even when, when you have a lopsided match like this, um, the better team is always told to match the inferior team physically. 
And Rangers can do that. Rangers are a very strong physical side. So I, I can't see Airdrie coming back from this. OK, well, that cheer you heard was not for Graham Spears. It's to signify the fact that the teams are coming back onto the pitch. So let's now rejoin our match commentators, Alan McAnally. And first of all, Archie McPherson. Thank you again, Jim. Well, as Mark Twain said, that a lies done lies in statistics. And you cannot get away from the harsh reality of what you showed there at halftime. The two goals and the, the indication of the pressure that Rangers had, or the possession that Rangers had, and the, the sheer harsh fact that they are a superior team to Airdrie, and it will require the veritable miracle to pull them back into something like parity. It looks beyond them at this stage, but it's a funny old game, as uh, somebody once said, and I think Alan McAnally, but we all hope that there's still a great deal of competition in this game, although one suspects, as Rangers start the second half, they might want to turn on a little bit of the style. Well, I, I certainly think, if, you know, the way they've dominated the game, you know, if you're looking for a real top performance by Rangers, you think they would turn on the style, but I'm sure there's been a few words from Alec Badal at the half-time. A little bit much of the same, I would think, though, really, just try and put Rangers under much pressure, force them to make a mistake, but uh, the way the first half has gone, I expect Rangers to get another couple of goals because, uh, you know, the gap in the clubs is massive, but out there today, the gap is also huge. Henry. Tucked away there by... Anthony Smith. I said about him very much an Adrianian. Started life as a winger, but like everybody else in football nowadays, has to be versatile like that man, Johansson. Just touched it back there now. Perini. Petchelskis. Tried to go after it, and then the ball goes out of play. That's an interesting point that Graham was making at halftime about Petchelskis and his transfer value. I suppose Rangers at the end of the day have to say, well, if we can, in effect, buy or guarantee success in the league, maybe any price is worth paying. Well, I suppose, I mean, £5 million for anybody is a lot of money, but if he's going to bring you pace down that right-hand side, most definitely experience, then uh, I don't agree with Graham because you're going to have to pay at least £5 million to get someone of that kind of quality. And uh, so far, OK, he's been injured, he hasn't been there all the time, but I wonder if he'll change his mind if he has a solid run of games and a real, you know, he plays a big part in anything Rangers do, and so far today he has, and had not been too brilliant saves from John Martin, but have bagged a couple already. Sandy Stewart. Somehow or other you feel that in the logic of a way a game goes, in a situation like this, said, we need to do something in the first 15 minutes of this match. And there's a lovely ball into beautifully headed on there by Austin McCann. And that is the clearest chance of the game. Suddenly, he sneaked in there, beating Perini to it. It was almost there. Great ball by uh, Paul McGrillan, and he got in in front of Kanchelskis. You can see here, Austin McCann gets, definitely gets in in front. That was unlucky because he could have easily beat. Charbonne at that far post. Paul McGrillian does really well here, turns a great ball in. McCann attacks the ball before Kanchelskis, and that was unlucky. And you almost called it right. They do have to get, do something in the first 15, and they almost did there. Nicely pulled down there by McCann. Playing in roughly the same kind, kind of position as uh, Van Bronckers. Doing a lot of defending and coming forward as we saw there. Uh, an awful ending to that move. Now Van Bronckers, this could be dangerous. It's three against two. Wallace going on the left-hand side, and the Dutchman delayed that far too long. An element of misunderstanding between himself and Wallace uh, picked up by Jimmy Sanderson. Tremendously loyal player, one of uh, Alec McDonald's first signing. Coming to Edry. Albonnier. Henry trying that longer ball now. Johansson. Didn't quite bring it down. And quite content at this stage to try to miss out midfield and 
hit the front runners. There by Jack. Brini well beaten there by McGrillen. Well, I think it's an, uh, an effective game in a way that he's been tenacious for the line Rangers players to settle whenever he's had that opportunity to go at them. Henry. Tempting Edry to come forward a little and try to get possession. Perini. Well, they're getting slack again and given that away. Picked up by Cooper. Played it just a little bit square. And a good tackle eventually by Vidbar. And Ferguson comes away with it. He held his uh, composure extremely well. Perini. Now Johansson. Kinchelskis and every player down at the moment as Rangers attack. And very fairly putting the ball out of play. There he is, uh, as I was pointing out about McGrillen. He has been combative this afternoon. You know, he hasn't uh, messed about. He's not going to be intimidated by the presence of the Rangers players. Maybe he's suffering a little as a result of that. Yeah, he's working very hard. Just a couple of minutes ago, putting a beautiful cross as well, didn't he? That McCann almost scored with the header Alan McDonald giving some instructions to his friend I didn't actually see what happened to Paul McGill and could only assume that he's, he's gone over on his ankle trying to get in to put Rangers under pressure again well he scored famous goals in his time scored that goal that winning goal for Falkirk against Celtic in the famous Scottish Cup semi-final game and he supports still buoyant and optimistic time in the world for Wilson to contemplate the alternatives tries to get that to Wallace and just a little bit too hard well in actual fact your hands away to the left was in a very good position probably a better position the way the second half has started Archie I mean Rangers have certainly got the foot off the accelerator and certainly Airdrie started quite well and if Rangers stay like this Airdrie will still have chances to get back into the game they'll have to pick the pace up the way they did initially if they're going to put Airdrie away because this will just suit Airdrie down to the ground they will hurry and hassle all this 45 minutes well, I remember a cup final that Airdrie played against Rangers something similar Rangers scored two quick goals it was a game that was as entertaining as a visit to the dentist by the way it was an awful cup final 92 I think it was and it followed uh, a pattern which Rangers decided the game was won early on and gave up after that. And it was far from over because every scored a late goal, and then it became pick the ball anywhere. Get inside to Sanderson, drives it in very well. That's uh, a very good clearance indeed by Wilson with the outside of the foot. Ian Ferguson beaten by the bounce. And I think a free kick for that. And all credit to Airdrie for the way they're tussling away. They know it's going to be extremely difficult for them. But at least there's a, a degree of spirit and enthusiasm about the way they're approaching this. And that was, once again, McCann creeping in. And I don't think the, the Rangers coach will like this one little bit I can assure you I want it's a decent ball in you think Steve Cooper's going to get the flick on and I probably think that's what Austin McCann thought as well he took the chance to get in though but the ball came through very quick he just couldn't control the ball good encouraging start to the second half by Edry and they give the impression that all is not lost that's exactly what this game required to make it competitive there's Vidmar neatly touched inside by Wilson who got to it on the outside and Paul McGrillen a very good run but caught offside and there's a little bit more variety 
by the way they're combining the moves. Well, you've not seen that from Airdrie so far. A lovely ball played through. Paul McGrillan actually running right along the line, trying to get in behind Colin Henry. Unfortunately, just the wrong side of him. The most definitely better signs here from Airdrie. They've picked the pace up. And Raiders are far too slack and far too lackadaisical. Ball inside there is taken away by Ferguson. It's Gonchalskis. I said earlier on it doesn't matter what kind of European game you play and something of the edge of your game is, is taken out of you and especially if you played away from home and there may be a little bit of a reaction creeping into Rangers play at this stage because of that yeah I wouldn't even go back as far as as the great result they had Archie I just think they think they've got this game won now going through the motions and they're the ones that put them under pressure making Rangers make mistakes Exactly like that. It's just slight play by Kanchelskis and they give the ball back and that will give Airdrie a little bit of confidence think they can get into the game again. Cooper came back to pick that up. Nice little run down the left-hand side. Marvin Wilson is there with uh, Perini. McCann, who's had a, a great start to this half. That's a very good ball in and... Bidmar just heading the ball the way he was looking. Now, Verdi pulled one back down the way they, they are playing. They, they seem buoyant. Much more buoyant than Alec McDonald is there. Much uh, this bustling performance is upsetting this Rangers defence. Kenny Black again. Johansson comes back. They've left. Wallace up front. Was a free kick, leg tackle there by Barry Ferguson, who has been quiet in this game throughout, almost throughout. He's had one or two lovely little touches, as we saw, but that's not the loveliest of them. No, he certainly you want to see him impose himself. He's a beautiful football player, good right and left foot. Just today, hasn't really got a grip of the game, although has showed some lovely touches. But that's the, for the simple reason: more, more often than not, he's been shadowed by Black and hasn't managed to be able to do anything. By Ferguson, Vidmar on the run on the outside. Just trundling it over though. As it goes on, you certainly have to imagine that the Airdrie players will gain more and more confidence from this, but there's always the perpetual threat of the pace that Alan was talking about uh, earlier on in the game and the sudden counter-attack by Rangers, as they showed in Germany. Many of you may have seen their goals on television. Classically, that free kick though. The Hansen being picked off in the middle now by Jack, especially in the air. As he needs Johansson needs the right kind of service. Touchling match there is Barry Ferguson just taken away again by Black. That was effective. Well, John Martin, I think he's been there as long as the Edric Cross itself. <laughs> 750 games, a long time, isn't it? I don't think that will be broken. And apart from his quite wicked mistake to give Rangers the lead, he's had a couple of fantastic saves to keep them in the game, really. forward there by Paul Jack beyond Kanchelskis but just a little bit too hard yes, I think you're right about that little um, cameo we saw earlier on with Kanchelskis caught out in defence he's not a, a, a really a defensive player at all he's very much a player in the opponent's half he is very deep again Anticipate this press conference after the game if it finishes like this with Dick Advocate talking about this phase in the game for Rangers where one or two of the players, I admit you're right, one or two may have thought the game was all over. Others are looking just a little bit uh, jaded. I just wonder whether he's maybe even thinking of bringing on Gordon Jury possibly for one of the top. See Scott Wilson going one way or the other. 
Steve, Steve Cooper definitely catches him there. I just wonder whether maybe bring on for Wallace or Johansson. Both worked extremely hard on Thursday night, and I don't see them just too willing. There he is, getting warmed up. I think Dick must have heard me, because when you're going to work, this is the kind of well, day, he, really. He, he did tell me he has a telepathic communication <laughs> with you, Alan. Well, he could do a lot worse than listen to me, actually, I can assure you. Anyway, but what I was going to say was, you, this is the kind of game now, you, when you've got possession, you're putting a little bit you've got to look for strikers to get... You know, to be working, to willing to take the diagonal runs into the corner. McGrillen, lovely ball across in. Oh, what a miss there by the substitute. Paul Johnson coming in on the right-hand side. And the better chances have fallen to Edry. And the way they're going on, they deserve a goal in this game. And that almost came. What a great chance that is. Again, McGrillen really active. Superb ball over. He's hoping somebody's in the middle. Somebody was in the middle. Paul Johnson. He's got a head like a turtle, not a head of the ball at all. He's just let it hit his head. A great ball from McGrillen. Really got to power that in past the goalkeeper. All he's done is let it hit him off his head, and it's gone past. That's probably the, the best chance. Another most definitely. Day. And Andre sat in command at this stage. That's two very good chances they've created for themselves. Distinctly a free kick. Colin Henry. A lot of pushing and jostling going on there. Sanchelskis. That's a beautiful ball forward and Ferguson on the run to Wallace. This is a counter-attack I think Edry had to fear. And it goes and it's too hard. Wasted ball eventually. We might be getting to this... Uh, very much anticipated situation with Rangers. They're not playing at all well at this stage, but they have the ability to break like that. Well, yes, they do. Of course, they do. I'll tell you what was noticeable there, though. It's a good early ball from Fergie, but Van Brockhurst, I think he's obviously feeling the pace as well. He would normally have burst in to try and support Rod Wallace round the outside or into the box, and he looked a little laboured getting into the box. Well, he's had a little bit of a doubt about him, didn't he? didn't well, train with the others in yeah, he Germany. Did. But he, he played very well on Thursday night, and I think to ask him to come out and do the same today. That is the best save Chabonnier's <laughs> made this afternoon. Saving a corner kick from that first pass. You'll be glad of it. Uh, Kinchelskis. Riding his way forward and brought down. Free kick was going to be a booking for the man I thought who's had the best of the first part of this half, Austin McCann. Well, it's certainly been... Sandwich in between there, Austin's trying to get back, he knows he can tell he's got a bit of pace to go down the outside. And Austin, having been forward here, is trying to get back into his position. There's maybe a little bit unlucky, there's not a great deal in that, but the fact that he's taken him from behind has decided. Uh, Ferguson, uh, he was looked at by the trainer, by the way. Not very quickly, and he seems to be okay. Dick Advocat just underneath us, uh, yellow card for McCann, as we said. Uh, Dick Advocat just underneath us had uh, turned around to his substitutes and talked to them again, but still no indication of any change. There he is. Just behind him, Bert Lingen, great youth coach. So many successes. Developing it, potential international players. Back it goes to McCann. Colin Henry, a bit of a clash there with uh, Ferguson coming in. Certainly seen the best of Edry in the second half. Ian Ferguson. Corini and it looks as if uh, Jury is coming on after all Gordon Jury who suffered that injury in the European game against uh, Park terrible tackle which uh, might have seriously injured his career well he's been out for that uh, couple of months and it looks as if he's now just about to make a reappearance 
thought they might make a change because things have gone pretty stale for Rangers. Bonnier and uh, it was uh, Wilson who took it off. And I think Jury is about uh, to make his entrance again. There's that uh, clash up there. And I think Scott Wilson's going to be all right. It is Johansson coming off. He's been asked to perform a difficult function, that uh, youngster, because he's not primarily a forward central striker. No, he's done well, and when he's been asked to, you know, to, to fill in there, you know, he's, he's returned with a few goals, and not only that, a very important one today, but he's done really well, but glad to see Gordon Jury back in. I'm a real favourite of Gordon Jury. He works very hard for the team, unselfish, good goal scorer, and as I say, that might just bring a little bit of sharpness back into Rangers, balls over the top, him chasing in and supporting him to get them back into this game because Airdrie have had a great start in second half. There's Paul McGrillen, second time in about 10 minutes he's been caught offside like that. Uh, maybe by the law of averages what will come off for him because he is doing very well and sneaking in behind that Rangers defence. We're living at the moment in defence right on the margin and uh, Alan McDonald. Yes. Can you let me just on the verge of <laughs> apoplexy? I was going to quote him there, but I thought maybe not. But he's been given renewed hope. Oh, it's still a, an onerous job for Edry. to look uh, away across towards Vidmar, I think James is right about that. Well, clearly that was going to the defender, I don't think Kanchelska had any chance of picking that up. He's still at it. Accusing somebody of being slightly mental there, I think. Can get rather angry, Alec. And under look at uh, Rod Wallace left all in his own there. Wilson, Beverly back with the head. And the two Rangers players are coming back there. I think we should uh, emphasize the fact that uh, a player coming back is usually given the benefit of doubt. Here's Wallace sneaking in there towards Gordon Jury. Oh, and he was in very heavily. And that was a missed timing. And I thought he was going to get in well, here still. Well, that, that I think, uh, ought to be a booking. Well, he certainly caught him, hasn't he? I'll tell you, I'm going to give full marks to Big John Martin here. Because Gordon Judy's definitely caught him. And Big John's jumped straight up, shaking the hands. You see, he didn't even have to be a goalkeeper. But the big man certainly did Gordon Jury a favour there because he could have really played on that. I think that was eminently sensible, putting your body in front of a boot. <laughs> <laughs> Just played uh, a little bit too much in front of Jury, by the way. It's <laughs> Kenny Black's there, so it's Sanderson. Easily away now, Ferguson taking no chances, not waiting for Kinchelskis uh, to come out. Could be Henry's ball again, Ferguson. Well, they can't put any cohesive movements together at the moment, Rangers. They're losing out in midfield where significantly Ferguson and uh, Van Bronckhurst are not operating as effectively as it did the other night, and I think that is precisely the reason why Edrio so much of the ball in midfield. Another reason is Rangers can't keep the ball. I mean, they're giving possession back to Edrio all the time. I mean, passing isn't as precise as it normally is, although I suppose they've got to put it down as well to Edrio, working so hard but not giving Rangers any space. Right, it's a bad ball by Wallace again. Should be picked up by Wilson. Charbonnier at the back. 
Well, this man earned more from his paintings, his oil paintings, when he was with Ozier 10 years ago than he did actually playing football. He doesn't have the Rembrandt of Scottish football, I suppose. <laughs> There's no oil paintings out there, I can assure you. McGrillan, and Chelsea's going back with him. Oh, that luckily came off the heel of Perini there. Now Wilson. There's no outside, and there goes Jury. He's got Wallace inside him. He's hit it too far ahead. And you could see he had overstretched himself. And I think the very presence of Sanderson beside him put him off. Well, he's on for exactly the reason I said. They're looking to get him behind. It's a good ball, and Joe Gordon was definitely onside. They've let him go. He's looked up to see if there was anybody inside. That touch there just lets him go. Sanderson does enough to get back. Good defending by Sanderson there. Ben Mark. And Broncos pushed right off the ball, and he does look tired. No question at, at all about that. I don't think he's put uh, taken the, the foot off the accelerator. I think he's run out of gas. No, I said. The last time, remember, I said that when he looked to you know, get in the box, and that's his game when the ball's played out to Wallace here to get into that box of support. And he looked pretty laboured. I've got to say, I'm not surprised. He's played well in the first half, put a lot of effort in Thursday, and he's really been a spectator in the start of the second half. Referee webbing play on McGrillan, and well read there by Colin Henry. And a little touch, but not uh, of any note. Bob Johnson again rising to that. But ahead of that, with a little bit of conviction, as he did the first chance, then the score would have been 2-1. So just about 19 minutes of the game remaining. They need a goal, though. Well, they've certainly matched Rangers, more than matched them in their, their fitness and endeavor, their work rate, lacking a little bit of quality, I think, in obviously some crucial areas of the, the park, but amply compensated for by the, the way they've driven at Rangers in the second half. All to their credit. Chelsea's not not the best pass to take for a, a player like Kinchelska, the goalkeeper. Well, it's pinged to him there, it's right on the line, he's coming back to try and keep it in play. Almost impossible. Another chance for Avery to get the ball onto big Stevie Cooper's head, get the runners off round about him. Yes. Wallace chasing after that, there's the breakaway. And he's away and he's going to do it. Yes, that's it. It's all over. Rod Wallace and you felt all along, even though Rangers were going through a very dull phase indeed, they had that ability to do that. And Rod Wallace scores his 10th goal of the season. Yeah, he did well there, Rod Wallace. All it is is a hump away into safety from Colin Henry. But once Rod Wallace is on the ball, he shows great composure, great control. You see your eye on the ball, goalkeeper, good control, finishes nice with his left foot. Unfortunately, defenders can't do anything about it. And all of a sudden, when Rangers are going to do a tricky time, Archie, they get a little break like that. Got to be said, great skill from Wallace. 3-0, and it's safe to say, Rangers are going to be in the final. And, you know, significantly for, for the rest of the season, Warning to all the other sides, I think Rangers are going to be like that. That ability to, to pull themselves out of the doldrums with quick counter attacks. There's a run again, and well, Gordon Jury was certainly offside, but the man who ran forward there certainly wasn't, and that was Barry Ferguson. Well, Barry Ferguson made a great run from deep there, and he's giving Gordon Jury offside, but Gordon Jury standing almost right next to the linesman. They're going to be another change. They're going to bring Arthur Newman on for Brad Brockhurst. They said he was a bit tired. And Arthur Newman, this will be a welcome sight for the Rangers fans. So Arthur Newman, the man who played so well for Holland in the World Cup. Certainly was sent off in that game against Argentina, but apart from that, that's my discovery, but apart from that, 
He played right through the competition at the highest standard, and the Rangers add a touch of class to their defence now. And there, shot by McGrillan, off balance. And a feeling of despondency there must be amongst the Edric players, having put out all that much effort and then be seeing a breakaway where the Rangers hardly have done, having done hardly anything in that uh, second half yet. That I think now uh, invulnerable lead. Yeah, I think so, Arch. I mean, they, they had played so well, they had a couple of half chances, then a very, very good chance from the header. They didn't manage to get it. And you've got a little bit of possession like that against Rangers, you're going to have to make them pay. But unfortunately, it just shows you they're all looking at the ball. Hendry clears the ball long, they're caught sleeping at the back, and Rod Wallace makes them pay and 3 nothing now, I would think. It would be very, very surprised indeed if Avery can come back from this. Well, that certainly perked Rangers up, there's no doubt about that. Arthur Newman away down the left-hand side. He might be going after this one. Ferguson just keeping the ball in play. There's Jury. Landing back hard for it and a bit too hard. Far away across that corner, didn't like it. And Gordon's got his arm across him, he has, uh, he's got his arm too high there. I think there's a little bit 50 50 there. Paul Jack's gone to ground very quickly, but referee's given the benefit of the doubt. Uh, Rangers and Airdrie up to this game hadn't conceded a goal in this competition. Certainly, Airdrie can hold their head up high, even though you know, they're massively outclassed today. I think the route to this semi final has been quite magnificent, but I think that the order they had today with a, a Rangers team absolutely flying was tall enough. But I think the gap has just been showed what it is today between the top of the division and into the first division. Alperini. There's Kinchelskis. It's a quick one, it's to Gordon Jury and almost pretty. Wonderful little triangular move that swinging way from one side to the other and perhaps deserving of the fourth goal. Yeah, I think I'm not trying to work out whether Gordon actually tried to play Perini in there or not. I'm almost sure he did because that's not a header to goal. He tried to get Perini coming in late. At last we see Kanchelskis delivering a ball of quality from outside to in. And that was almost 4-0. And you get the feeling now, don't you, that Rangers all of a sudden have decided, all right, let's try and get another one. Jury. Henry. Edging forward himself after Newman away in the leg, desperate to get his first touch of the ball. Here's Gordon Jury. There's Newman again. Touches it beautifully to Wallace, and that is it again. His 11th goal. It's now 4 0, and coming just slightly further back from him from that beautiful little touch by Arthur Newman. And that's it, as you said, Alan, he wanted a little bit of style to finish. Yeah, well, all of a sudden, Arthur Newman's into the play. And he brings his class in, he gets the ball, cuts inside, it's a beautiful run. I'll tell you what it does though, he makes his mind up, Wallace makes a great run across, and all he needs is a little bit of touch just to direct it. You can see, it's a great run from Rod, a beautiful ball in from Arthur Newman. And thank you very much, number four. Rod Wallace will be enjoying this now, I'm sure he'll be wanting his hat trick. He just needs a little bit of touch to direct it, it's on goal, and that makes it number four. And interestingly enough, Arthur Newman can play uh, left midfield as well apart from playing there for bank. In fact, some people think his defensive qualities aren't as strong as his, his attacking ones in that regard. Colin Henry, right into the rafters of this magnificent stadium. I'll tell you something actually as well, even though they're you know, well on top Rangers, Nathan Newman's been out and he's been introduced today, even just being involved in that little goal, that'll do his confidence. No word of good, and he's, he's back, isn't he? I'm sure Dick Abbott's very pleased about that. You wonder... <laughs> you wonder what Tony Beatman is standing very near him in the penalty area at the moment is thinking about all this. Keep your eye on Beatman in case he tackles Newman, aren't you, will you? <laughs> very frustrating, this game. He's done well today really. as well, yeah. Paul McGrillan. Yeah. He really yeah. has. He's worked so hard for Edgy today, and unfortunately... 
hasn't got really much success out of it, but he's put two great balls in for two headers that they had chances with. Kenny Black again. High in air by Sandy Stewart, couldn't really get hold of that at all. And you know, taking uh, this League Cup into consideration, the internationals that players get involved in as the, the crowd are beginning to celebrate, I don't think prematurely. Uh, taking all these games into account, it's a tremendous drain on the resources of clubs. But you could tell uh, from the way that uh, Rangers, or the, the way the manager refused to substitute, not all that easily, that he wants these players to bind together as often as they can, get as many games together as often as they can. It's going to be not all that much rest for this Rangers side. Neatly out. <laughs> and the Raven support have taken up moral practice. Well, that's a tuneful about 20 minutes ago. No, they weren't, that's because Airdrie had done so well, but no, they certainly, I said they were maybe looking to get another one. They get a little big range, as it must be said, for the third goal, but all of a sudden they seem to drop for it again, don't they? Looks like Gareth Evans may be warming up. Come on for Airdrie in the last... 10 minutes of this game. Colin Henry edging away from the centre back position and almost sending Bidmar off. There's Rod Wallace, rejuvenated as a player way back in that uh, left midfield position. And a sense of relaxation through Rangers ranks now I don't think they were actually getting into a complex about the way Eddie were playing but it was certainly in a rut and Rod Wallace got them out of it there's Arthur Newman trying to go forward it may well be that Rangers might consider giving Newman a run with Bidmar behind him, but Van Bronckhurst is uh, suffering. They, they play that uh, very important game against Motherwell on Wednesday. So we just wait and see how Van Bronckhurst is. I think they're going to make that substitution now. Yeah, substitution. There's Paul Jack. Comes off. And comes Gareth Evans. Gareth has got pace as well. We've seen him a lot uh, in Scottish football. So him him him. I think Gareth, I think he won this competition with Hibbs. Uh, it did indeed, and I think um, a little bit too late for him to act Superman now. <laughs> there he is. Scored many a good goal in this day. Gareth Evans, that's the way. Uh, Gordon Jury running for it. Comes back to Perini. There's Wallace spreading out, but Perini deciding to go across the field. No pressure on Henry. Perini. And nobody you notice that and they're not chasing and harassing the Rangers players that were doing in the first part of this half, there's Wallace going in for that, Arthur Newman to the side, Wallace and there's a corner kick, I think Newman might have gone for that himself, well I thought he was going to have a part, he's actually tried to get Rod back in the way they did for the fourth goal, the reason they can't Arch is because they're, they're completely tired now and they cannot possibly keep putting pressure on a team, I promise you it's easier to have the ball and work than not to have it and chase it to try and get it and the guys here, they have what to have, but they've just nothing left. Newman. Once 
drops it back again. Very one-footed uh, Arthur Newman, of course, that left foot of his. But it's a very good one, and it's Jury! Nicely shot cross. As I said, he, he's got a very cultivated left foot, puts it in there. I think Gordon should have done a lot better there, actually. Yep. I know they've certainly well into it. I think he probably thought that Stevie Cooper was going to win the header and Gordon wasn't going to get it, but half chance. Going away. It's Newman again. Out to Jury. Looks full of running Jury all the same. He's up for it. No question about that. Here's Arthur Newman wanted that ball played forward in his offside. I think the, the, the pass, the final pass, was just that little bit over delayed. Yeah, I thought actually Fergie should have played the ball a lot quicker than he did because Arthur's made a, a run really early, a couple of seconds before he even got the ball there. But Ian just couldn't bring it under control to get the ball through to him. Bidmar coming away himself. Decided to go on his own, he's being pulled back. The referee letting go on. Here's Wallace again. Well, the referee distinctly played advantage there. And I think it was a good decision. I mean, he, he did give uh, Wallace the opportunity to pick it up. I think even the referee thought that Wallace was going to be in a better position, but Danny's oh, touched a beautiful it pass there. Bedmar in there. Well, Gordon Jerry wanted a little, a little bit more elevation than that. So, into the last five minutes, there will, of course, be an injury time. Remember, we are live at Easter Road on Tuesday evening when Hearts play St. Johnson. That should be a, a really good game. I watched St. Johnson yesterday, as uh, Bobby knows, and they played very well. As Bobby Williamson gratefully admitted after the game. So that, I think, is going to be an excellent game live on Scottish on Tuesday and the winners will play Rangers in the final which again is live and that's a free kick and the yellow card is out there putting the in the back of the calf muscle well you know I'd, I'd like to see a club like Adrian and, a, and a, an enlarged Premier Division you know we've got a marvellous little stadium up there I think our league is far too tight and we've, we've got to incorporate these clubs now with, with all the, the investment they've put in for the game well I think they're now ready for it Adrian they have a, a new stadium they have some good, very good players but there's no question that you know they could I don't know against Rangers and, and the bigger clubs, but Celtic obviously in that one to hold their own, but they would certainly be a very difficult team to beat week in, week out here, never mind in the cup. Franceskis, probably down the right-hand side. Might have been a hand used there, but at this stage, Back by Black. Off Kanchelskis. And so it goes on. This competition has quite clearly been appraised by the Rangers management as important enough to take on the Sandry team, put them away very early on, then get just a little bit too casual, and again, combined with showing signs, I think, of the tremendous task that they were faced with in Germany. And all of that made uh, it possible for an Airdrie comeback. There he is, the little general they call him now. It's a nice touch of humor, this man, as well. Black. Played by Perini. Gordon Jury should pick it up and does. He's got support by Wallace. Way in the left-hand side, there he is. Jury thundering through the middle for this. He's going to put it away. That is a glorious goal. Set up and finished by Gordon Jury. And a man coming back from injury cannot do it in a more accomplished...
accomplished way done that. Couldn't be more happy for Gordon Jury. Really good pal of mine. He's had a real bad injury. He, he made the goal. That's a good work by Rod Wallace. Give him a bit of weight. A fantastic ball inside. Now Gordon has to do direct into the net. And it's number five. Good ball out there. You can see Rod. You can just see Gordon on the side of the picture. Just comes in now. Busting the gut to get in there. Great ball. 5 0. Sorry, Alex. I got it right. Well, you know. <laughs> I had to get that in there because yeah, he wasn't speaking exactly. to me. <laughs> well, uh, don't say any more. It's I won't. Lawyers. I won't. I promise. No, I, 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 tongue in cheek, actually. I mean, yeah. I don't want anybody to beat by nothing. I just thought that the, gap, ha was, that that way, the yeah. gap was going to be awfully big. Uh, but, and having watched Rangers the Thursday night, they were so impressive, actually, that they you know, What a stark contrast there is between the first 20 minutes uh, of this half and this emphatic Rangers win now. You wouldn't have guess at that stage the Rangers would end up with five goals and probably even more he's Kinchelskis wants to put it in himself there's Ian Ferguson and now you get the sensation perhaps sadly that that every defensive rank in the latter part of midfield is beginning to crumble well yeah they not, they've, they've had to work very hard of course they have but you're right Archie for a, for a long time in the game Airdrie had the best part of the second half a little bit of more luck, they could have maybe even levelled it at two each, but Rangers got a little break to make it three, and that's when they decided to just lift it a gear, and all of a sudden it's been the one-way traffic and again. I mentioned the breakaway Rangers go, you know, that's always in them, despite how they've been playing. And the final whistle goes, it's all over, 5 nothing. I think these Rangers supporters, who were largely quiet in the first 20 minutes of the second half, have seen something of the great quality of this Rangers side. They had that uh, period when he seemed to go into the doldrums and then came through it with classic counter-attacking, an emphatic victory eventually, and a sad side of the Airdrie players in contrast to Arthur Newman there, who must be absolutely delighted with the way he's come through, producing delightful little touch for the goal and uh, showing confidence, there he is, the Dutch international. It's all looking good for Rangers at the moment on the European front and the domestic front. And for Airdrie, a gallant effort, Alan. It was most, most definitely a gallant effort by Airdrie. At one point with the early goal, you thought it might be the onslaught, they actually survived that. And if anything, in the second half, really come out and give it their best shot, it wasn't enough. And I think the gap was just too big in the day. And you can go back and have a chat with Alan McDonald now. <laughs> the prognostication, absolutely right. The final score, Rangers 5, Adrian Hill. So there we have it, Rangers 5, Airdrie Nil, as Archie said, Alan McAnally called it correctly on Friday. I've got to go home in the same car as him, he's going to be insufferable tonight. I'll be back with Bobby Williamson and Graham Spears in a couple of minutes, so stay with us. Uh, with the exception of, of us maybe making a mistake, uh, Lionel didn't have a save to make, so it was important that we kept a clean, uh, clean sheet and we tried to play. You know, we didn't just want to lump the ball forward. And I know it's uh, the, the fans would be patient sometimes, but I think today they've seen, they witnessed at least the way we tried to play the game. And there was quite a few quality goals there. Yeah, some great goals. Um, I don't know who will be trying to get, <laughs> try to claim the best one in there, but uh, it's important that we we'll win, we'll win in style. It's been a hectic week for Rangers, that European um, game midweek. Did you take your toll? Obviously, 5-0, not, not that much. Well, no, I, I think uh, maybe first period of the second half. Uh, just into the second period there, we, we sat back a wee bit and we looked a little bit jaded, but we managed to up a gear um, and we got our third goal and, yeah, we scored five good goals. But you've made the first final of the season. You must be very happy with the way Rangers are shaping up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we've said this this week, they spoke about how good or how well the team's been gelling it does take time uh, and you know the longer we play together the better we'll get a word of consolation for the edge of the battle card yeah they did they did and uh, steve cooper i remember playing against them at barnsley when i was at blackburn rovers about 10 years ago so uh, i wasn't uh, an unknown company but thanks for joining us anyway pleasure thanks Cheers. thank you Colin Henry with Katrina Harvey, but, uh, Katrina Harvey rather, sorry Katrina, it's been a, it's been a great week for Rangers, 3-0 against Hearts last week, 2-1 against Leverkusen and then that 5-0 result today taking them into the League Cup final. Yeah, it was an awesome performance from Rangers and they actually can keep their heads held up high because uh, they had to beat most teams in Scotland today in that performance, 
as I say, they're very daunting for the rest of the Scottish Premier League winning that performance today. But we said before the match, Graham, you know, what could Airdrie do to stop this roller coaster juggernaut, call it what you like? And, and obviously they didn't have the answers, but who can blame them? No, and, and also, you know, we have to say in fairness that they, they, they had degrees of misfortune. They lost Alan Moore, they suffered a, a, you know, let's be honest, a bad goalkeeping error. And the, the third Rangers goal, the first Rod Walls goal, I, th I think was like a knifing for Airdrie. It really took the life out of them. At that stage, they were making a decent fight of the second half. But after the third goal went in, you know, there was no way back for them. Yeah, Bobby, it was 2-0 it was at half-time. Uh, but Airdrie started well. Yeah, and a minute into the second half, we saw an, an, a header from McCann, which, which could have pulled them back into the game. That's right. They had a couple of headed chances uh, just at the very start of the second half. And uh, they unfortunately never hit a target with either. But uh, if they could, could have got a goal then, they might have got them back into the game. But as I said, Rangers kind of weathered that wee storm there and uh, they got back on top of the game. And, and a hopeful ball at the park found its way right through for Rod Walsh to go down the keeper. I, I don't think Sherbonny was all that keen on the way his defence was positioned there. They just looked a bit relaxed, didn't they? I think he was wasting time, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but right on the hour mark, Graham, Airdrie had another chance at that point. They were still only 2 0 down. Uh, McGrillan's cross for Forbes Johnson and well, his header went a bit askew, yeah, didn't it? This is what happens when, you, when you're a footballer and you, you study to become a lawyer instead of concentrating on <laughs> football. He's got a, a, a lot of degree for us and he gets straight in the box. It's a great cross. McGrillan did very well and he just he just didn't connect with it at all. It was a bad miss. W would you have been having a go at him for maybe doing better there, Bobby? Uh, the boy will be feeling sorry for himself just now. He, he'll be disappointed with that effort. Uh, he's, uh, he must have been able to see the whole goal and the ball at the same time. And he just guided it past the post. He'll be, he'll be bitterly disappointed a lot. At that stage, Archie in commentary was suggesting that Rangers were a bit laid back and not taking it too seriously. And then, of course, as you say, they went straight up the park and Wallace made it 3-0. Well, to be fair, I think Rangers did play well within themselves and they're really allowed on that. With that early goal, they could take their foot off the pedal and eventually pass the ball about. But it's a tremendous piece of finishing. And Rod Walsh shows great pace and getting away from the defence there. He's, he's got frightening pace a lot. And it's such a strength finish. for him, isn't it? Yeah, it's excellent. Running at pace and managing to control the ball. Anthony Smith was right behind them. But you have to admire a striker that can sprint 30 or 40 yards like that, chasing the ball, keeping control of it, rounding the keeper and, and finishing so, so coolly. It was a fine goal. And another man who will hopefully be running like that for Scotland in due course, Bobby, once he's fully fit, Gordon Jury. He's had another run out today, hasn't he? And that'll have done him a lot of good. Tremendous for Gordon Jury. He was determined to get in the box, picked the ball up and went out there to defence, played it wide, and he carried his run on. He wanted to get in that box and get himself a goal. Here he's been a wee bit selfish and he's tried to find Perini. But um, maybe the other day he went for goal. Gordon Jury, promising signs that he's on the way back today, Graham. Yeah, he is. I, I, to be honest, I have never seen a more hard-working or industrious striker in my life than Gordon Jury. I, sometimes he plays in a different way f for Rangers than he does with Scotland. Sometimes you think with Scotland, he, he has to spend so much energy and shed so much sweat that when it, when it comes to rare opportunities in the box, he's got no balance of poise left because he's so knackered. But he's a great all-round striker and he, he, he works so hard. And the reason he came on, of course, Bobby, Van Bronckhorst, he was just flagging a little, wasn't he? Yeah, Dick Attica introduced his substitutes at the right time. He brought in Newman, who done very well as well. Had a great ball through for one of Rod Walsh's goals, and uh, they needed the fresh legs at that stage in the game, I think, and that gave him impetus to actually stretch a lead. I think I called that wrong there. I think Newman came on for Van Bronckhurst, didn't he? And he, he, he made an yeah, immediate yes. effect, gr yes. effect grim, didn't he? Yeah, he, he, he set yeah. up the goal. As Archie quite rightly said in commentary, he's, he's played uh, the kind of the left-sided midfield role for Holland in the past. So Rangers, in effect, had two, uh, mm. two overlapping <laughs> left fullbacks. So they're not, they're not lacking in that regard. Yeah, let, let's have a look at this goal which he set up, the, the goal for uh, Rod Wallace. Arthur Newman here, makes a little reverse pass. Yes, it was, very good box. And, uh, and uh, you wouldn't say he, he um, Rod Wallace's finish was full-blooded there, but he, but he got, got the ball just at the right angle, nudged it past John Martin. And again, as, uh, as, as, as Archie was saying in commentary, he's a bit one-sided on the left, but he played that ball through with his that right great foot. foot. Great weighted pass with his right foot and uh, a great movement for Rod Wallace. He's really getting behind Airdrie and really hurt them. And, uh, so it's a good finish. He's put it past the keeper and it's in the back of the net. OK, let's go back down to the tunnel now where Katrina is speaking to the Rangers manager, Dick Abacat. Dick, a good uh, Euro away win midweek and 5-0 here, a, cup, a, a place in the final even. Um, you must be delighted with the way things are going. Well, the lights was 5 nothing. Uh, I think it was a difficult game because everybody was expecting that we should win, and but uh, everybody played uh, a good game. But uh, you, you could see the difference uh, with, with the goal scoring, and uh, that was our advantage, and uh, we deserved to win. You mentioned the goal scoring there. There were some real class finishes. Yes, uh, some, there were some excellent goals, but uh, 
I think the way the way we played, we, we can do much better than we showed today. But again, uh, everybody was expecting that we should uh, that we should win, uh, and we did. But still, I think we can uh, play better. Do you think maybe that was because you had the game so close to this one? Yeah, well, everything is too close because uh, we uh, we came back Friday morning three o'clock and. Uh, it's now a Sunday afternoon, and uh, they give everything uh, away, so uh, you can't lay back because otherwise they will score, and uh, you have to concentrate, so that takes a lot of en energy out of you. But still, we won. And Gordon Judy, he came back into the scene and scored a cracking goal. Uh, that was an excellent goal, a good goal on the break, and uh, for him it was an important goal because after 10 weeks uh, injury. So no, everything looks fine. And you've made the first final of the season, so you must be happy. Yes, I'm happy. Thanks very much. Thank you. Yeah, he's happy, isn't he? Yeah, Definitely. Obvious, yeah. He'll be glad to get that game out of the way, Bobby, because it's such a touch, tough match on Thursday, and then he knew this was coming up. He'd be glad to get out of the way, and he can now concentrate on the league again, Europe, and the finals away in the distance. That's right. They'll get bigger prizes ahead of him on, on, on target, really. And uh, he'll be delighted to get that game behind him, as you said, because uh, yeah, they are not an easy team to play against. They work very hard for each other, and that was a pitch match in the second half, and how the Donald's team came back out and tried to get out Rangers. He actually put on an attacking player and took off a defensive player where else I've been thinking to put a defensive <laughs> player on and try and stop before goals going in. Graham, uh, with a little bit of prompting from Katrina there, he, he praised Gordon Jury's contribution and before he scored he had a great chance for the header if I remember correctly. Yes. Um, yes, well, I mean, I think, as, as we said before, I, I think Dick Advocat has a real appreciation of, of what are regarded as traditional British qualities. You know, when I speak to... Dick Avocat during the week at press conferences, it's perfectly obvious this guy is a great admirer of energy and commitment and industry and hard work. Um, uh, he quite often talks about Rangers playing in the opposition half of the field, closing down and working hard in the opposition um, part of the field. And if you speak to Dick Avocat, he quite often uses this kind of clenched fist. Yeah. It's obviously a universal uh, sign of all managers. He means dig and hard work and commitment. And I think he appreciates all these things. OK, well, let's uh, hear from the man who was on the receiving end of that 5-0 drubbing, Alex McDonald, speaking to Katrina. <laughs> 